Alexa, play the podcast Alan McKay. Getting the latest episode of Alan McKay. Here it is from iHeartRadio. Welcome to the Alan McKay Podcast. Alan is an Emmy Award-winning visual effects artist and mentor to many leading industry experts. Listen in as Alan talks with other industry leaders in film, video games, and visual effects about their experience, lessons, and methodology. Alan will teach you pivotal advice to fast-track your career, better your skills, and reach your ultimate dream job. Check out the latest episodes on alanmckay.com. Okay, so I thought I would make this a little bit of a rant, but um, a chance just to do a solo episode because it's been a while. I've done a lot of um, interviews, things like that. It's been going really well and experimenting with the boot camps, which I really love the idea of and I'm trying to make happen. It's one of those things I did the math very early on and I'm like, yeah, the amount of work that's going to go into every single boot camp, it's just not sustainable. But the amount of feedback I got, I was just like, okay, I got to make it happen. It's got to, it's going to happen. It's just got to figure out all the kinks and um, I like those challenges, you know, so I'm excited about it and right now I'm in the middle of basically uh, front loading my year as much as possible, which in the boot camp, uh, the first one, we actually kind of talked a little bit about that. Um, it's kind of interesting. I thought that this would just be a fun free for all episode I'd throw in there as a chance to um, kind of catch up on so much that's going on. So as I'm recording this, it's the very beginning of 2018. Um, who would have thought? So it's uh, it's been kind of interesting. And I'm again, like I think that typically each year when I've done the podcast, and I can't believe that I can actually say each year at this point, um, it's been kind of interesting just to, you know, I usually am trying to end the year strong. And I guess we did do that. But um, really end the year strong with like getting you ready for next year. And with this year, there was so much going on towards the end of the year. It was really fulfilling, but at the same time, really overwhelming. And that was um, doing the boot camp. Last minute, I came up with that concept and I'm like, yep, this is insane, but let's make it happen. And the only way I could make it happen with all the projects that were happening, uh, as well as the free training that I put out, the um, the productive artist book uh, that we're doing, the hardware guide we're doing. There's actually a lot of stuff i got to still announce publicly that... Um, We've finished and it's available. We just haven't really told anyone because, again, I've been too damn busy. Um, but there's a lot going on at the end of the year. And on top of that, we are opening the, the doors to registration. I'm trying not to talk too fast right now, but uh, so much I got to get done today. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was basically opening registration for the live action series, which closed last Friday. And, um, you know, doing that on top of everything else, it was just insane. And now that we are at that point, like I'm really excited about Monday. And to me, I'm really excited because it's a chance for me to uh, get to know a whole new batch of students, get to spend a year going through all of this work together and um, and really focusing on growth. And right now, uh, basically, I'm, I'm running two courses, which is um, the mentorship, which will open up in probably June. And of course, the live action series. And I don't really want to do too much more outside of that because um, there's only so much time I can give and doing the live reviews, um, the meetups, the career intensives. We've got one coming up, I think, in a week um, in portfolio reviews. Uh, you know, there's so much going on on top of like shooting uh, and filming and getting everything ready. And uh, yeah, it's it's overwhelming a lot of the time. So I'm trying to just focus on these two courses being the, the big focus right now for me, as well as doing production work and uh, everything else that's going on, podcasts, uh, you know, everything. And I find it really fulfilling seeing the growth that happens. Like it was really cool over Christmas. I actually got a few emails. Like one was from Scanline, one of the leads at Scanline saying like, yeah, I think we have like four or five people in, um, in Scanline now, like worldwide, like filling up spots there. And there's people going to ILM, Weta, uh, it's just been really cool just to see all the success stories of all these artists who've gone through the training and then seeing uh, all the growth that happens to them along the way. And, you know, I've mentioned before, but I love when people are reaching out like, man, I, I have a problem. Like I've got too many jobs. You know, what do I do sort of thing? So I find that really fulfilling for me. That's like um, something that I'm excited to go, you know, round three 
on doing again, like doing another round uh, with this. So it's definitely gonna be really fun. I think that um, the more that I get into it, the more that I think about this though, and, and that is like, it's January right now. And it doesn't matter whether you're listening to this in October or June, whatever. But um, I think that all of us have a lot of goals and we, you know, the beginning of the year is a good chance just to hit the reset button. It doesn't mean that you can't be having growth and change and, and really making big moves in your career anytime, any day. You can wake up at midnight and say, okay, today's the day. Um, but it's more about really making that committal to yourself. And I always think about that, let's say, when someone's going into a new course. Okay, so you start going through um, taking on new training, new course. For you, this might be like, okay, cool. I'm going to sign up for this thing and tomorrow I'm going to be a god. You know, and I, I experience that occasionally where you get these people who don't have the patience going in to actually see something through because what they want is that instant results. And what I find is really interesting is that there are people getting those interesting or instant, sorry, results. But it's because they're making that commitment and they're dedicated and they're doing it. And that's the difference. Like that's where they gain the results. But I think for some people, I think it's more of a psychological trigger that if they sign up for something, then they get the result. Like they're buying the result. And I like to think of this the same way that like maybe you sign up at the gym and you just expect to have six pack abs, uh, you know, the minute the, the credit card gets swiped. And the way that I look at this is that the minute you sign up for the course, you're giving yourself permission to invest in yourself. Like this is where the journey begins. This is where you're Luke Skywalker and you're about to go on the journey to become uh, the a Jedi over time. You know, you're going on a journey to get that growth, to meet Yoda, to go through the struggles, the hurdles that you're going to run through. This is where the real work begins is when you sign up. It isn't, I paid for the abs where are my apps? It's I paid for the opportunity to make big change in my life, to invest in myself and to have that guidance to uh, to push myself and to be surrounded by others going on the same journey. So together, we motivate each other, we push each other, we do so much together. So I always think about that because I always think about where people are on in their journey. And I've started to think about that with the training that I do too, where I really, and this is going to sound so weird, but I really start to picture where are people struggling? If I were to picture someone going through uh, their career, their uh, training, even doing courses and, and things that I'm doing, if they were going through a cave, you know, at every moment, you know, do they, are they lost? Are they feeling doubt? Are they feeling fear? Do they need that motivation? Are they struggling or are they feeling good about themselves? And what can I do to help them along the way? How could I be that Yoda sitting in the corner, um, being able to push them and give them that encouragement, that advice to to make the right decisions. Because I think that with training, with a lot of things, it's easy to say like, um, you know, there is so much training available. And I, I love that, and I am jumping around here, but like, I love that with, um, there's an episode I did with Andrew Kramer, uh, which was really interesting where we both kind of talked about like, there is so much training out there. You know, you could go and learn to be sufficient in the world by just going online, but, um, and for free, but like, it's overwhelming, you know, like you have paralysis by analysis. There's so much stuff out there and there's so much misinformation that it's hard to know who to trust and where to go to. So for me, like I am addicted to learning, to growing, to getting as much information everywhere I can, but usually it's going to be from someone who's gone down that path before. You know, um, I want them to have gone through and be able to cut the fat, you know, be able to say like, look, you know, I spent 10 years getting good at this thing so I can now tell you how to do it in a week or a month, you know. And I think that that's such a, a valuable thing in itself to just have someone who can give me uh, the right results. So I'm not spending months of my own personal time, my valuable time learning things incorrectly or just finding that all of the time I invested into something has no payoff whatsoever. And I'm always fascinated by that. Like, it sounds really cruel, but there's there's times where um, really late at night, I might be talking with a few of the guys at Digital Domain and we're kind of firing back like uh, YouTube videos that people are making on stuff. And, you know, it's just more not laughing at them, but more just kind of looking at what people are doing or the, the way that they're doing it and just, you know, getting some humor from it. Because there is a lot of people who, 
are putting information out there and it's just completely like damaging. It's, it's actually doing worse than not watching the video. And so, you know, that's where it's kind of like fun to kind of watch that stuff. But when you think of it in, in terms of the, uh, the big picture, like that, it's kind of scary that there is all this information out there readily available to take you on the wrong journey. Like if you were that person walking through the cave, it, you know, um, on that, that journey with the struggles and everything else, having that evil Yoda on your shoulder, basically saying, go left, like walk off a cliff, you know, and that's essentially what it's doing. So again, I, I look at that too. I look at, you know, where does this information come from? And, uh, and that's why typically when I go to learn something, like I go all in, you know, I'll start reading someone's book and they'll mention like five other books and I'm already on Amazon, like ordering those books. Uh, the same way that if I really trust that person, like I will read that book a hundred times. I will read everything else that they've done and get as much as I can from it. Um, I, I always just find that really fascinating to kind of dive into and to um, to take what you can from it. Uh, and, you know, so like I said, when, when I um, hit record, it was basically me thinking like, hey, you know what? Like, I wouldn't mind just talking about the fact that it is the start of the year, but it's also a chance for us to have new opportunities to do a lot. But I think that... Um, as I go down this rabbit hole, because again, I, I love the idea of education and training. And right now, it's really relevant with um, all the students who Monday are about to start their journey uh, going through that cave and um, and see where they come out. You know, I think it's really valuable to also think like, I know there are going to be people on the way that they're, they're not ready. They, they're, they're waiting for those abs like every morning. Like, are they there yet? Um, when really, it's going to come down to like this is where the journey begins. This is where the struggles, like this is hard work. Change is always hard. Like if it wasn't, it wouldn't be worth it. It wouldn't, like, you know, we would all be at that point, but the ones who are pushing themselves, who are innovating, who are doing more than the other people, that that are the one. those are the ones, I should say, I'm getting tongue tied. Those are the ones that are getting ahead. And I had this conversation last night with someone about how in their industry, like they want to be able to pick their own clients. You know, they want to be able to work on what they want. They want the clients to always trust them to just make amazing stuff. And um, the more we kind of get into that conversation, the more it's like, look, you know, that is not for everyone. That is so rare. That is like literally the 0.1% or 0.01% of the world that in a creative space actually gets the luxury of being able to do all of these things. And it's not impossible. You can do it. But it requires you to make noise, to get out there, to identify the things that are holding you back. And this is a whole other conversation, but it was one that uh, of many actually last night that um, were really relevant in terms of if you want to do all these things, you, you literally got to start thinking about the things that you're not doing. What are the things that you think that you should be doing and you're not? Because it's very easy for you internally just to kind of course correct and go down the wrong cave path because you know it's a shorter path. It's going to lead to shorter results. But you're willing to take those just because it's easy. Whereas the hard ones, uh, you know, that path to take is going to be the, the the one that's going to have the most struggle. So let's say that you're an artist and you want to build a brand. You want to get your name out there. And the one thing you're not doing is doing video or putting your face out there. You know, um, you're happy to show your art, but only when it's finished and it's perfect. And you know that like when it comes to building that audience that people are going to talk about showing those work in progress things, showing things as they're early and going to get judged the most, uh, showing inside into you working away. Like people love doing that. I can take a picture of my keyboard or my desk and it gets, you know, a lot of likes and <laughs> all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's interesting, but I might think it's weird, but then I notice I'll do it too. Like I'm, I love seeing someone working away, killing themselves, like trying to fulfill the thing that they're, they're challenging themselves with. And you get behind that. And so taking a step back, when you, you do have those moments that you uh, you want to do something that big, like as I mentioned uh, with that person who wants to have this dream job where they get to literally create work for the most amazing clients on the planet and they get to essentially select what they're going to do. All of that is possible. Like I don't ever want to discourage and say that's impossible, but you need to identify like if you want the great things, the the highest of highest things, the unobtainable, you're going to need to start doing all the things that scare you shitless, the things that you know deep down you're not doing because there's someone else out there who's going to come up who is who is exactly you in every single way, except the difference is that they were willing to go and do all those things that you're not comfortable with. They were willing to commit the time. They were willing to 
look at their faults and say, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Who cares what other people think? You know, uh, going back to that about like posting your work, like what I was saying is like, you can always delete a post if like the next day you're like, oh my God, I can't believe like this backfired completely. Delete the post, done. Like the good thing about, um, you know, when we're talking about social media is that it has a lifespan of seconds. Like people are not interested in you. They're interested in, the, in themselves. And um, really that's what social media is, is essentially an extension of themselves a lot of the time. And, you know, it's, it's its own thing, which I'm not going to get into, but um, there's positive and negative with anything. But the whole point is that you need to start doing all that stuff. And I look at myself like uh, this year, uh, <laughs> it's kind of interesting that like originally at the end of last year, it was all about like, I, I just get to get over the hump of 2017 because it's it in its own way, it, it's been an interesting year that like um, I'm having hangups about like it's a successful year. Like probably look at it. It's probably the most successful year I've had, which is good that every year. I've been able to say that, um, but at the same time, like um, I'll I'll be open and honest right now. Uh, I've got issues about last year that I can't even think about right now. That I, I get, <laughs> uh, I was trying to describe it to one of my friends um, on a call yesterday, and I I started freaking out just even going near it. And it's basically there's certain things that I need to get through in early January that are literally going to be therapy to me. Like once they're done, I can then look back at last year and say, okay. There are certain things that I'm not at all happy with, like um, that I have like major issues with that I really need to address, but I'm not, I'm not I can't even go near it. I get literally tensed up and, and stressed out because um, I need to, to get over this, this hump. I need, there's certain things I need to cross off my list um, early um, in January. And then from there, I can, I can sit back and say, okay, good. But it's already getting to a point where there is so many things happening in 2018 already for me that I'm kind of freaking out. Like there was probably a, a week and I'm only on week three, but it was already a week where always nothing got done because of uh, paralysis by analysis, which I mentioned earlier, but essentially that is overwhelm by too much going on uh, or too many things that I could potentially be focusing on. And, um, you know, these are all good things and everything going on is great, but uh, it's still one of those things that like, uh, I talk about always having the, you know, being in the trenches and having the altitude at the same time. And this is one of those moments where uh, if I have that 30,000 foot view of like everything going on, I'm going to freak the fuck out. So for me, I need to have those horse blinkers on. I need to literally be in the trenches, just focused on what's in front of me. And it's the only way that I can move forward. And I think that that's important for all of us because um, when we have those big goals that I mentioned about wanting to do so much and saying, this year is going to be my year. And you start to think about, okay, well, look, I want to do, you know, I want to heal world hunger and, and do all these amazing things. If that was your prerogative, then looking at one year, you're going to get overwhelmed and say, well, you know, in the grand scheme of things, I'm not going to get much done this year. That's really going to impact that because you're not looking at the 30,000 view of, well, one step at a time and you're going to get to whatever that um, unattainable goal is and make it attainable for you to make that, um, progress to, to really make a change, you're going to need to just focus on taking one footstep forward every step until you start to look back and say, shit, I actually have made, had a lot of growth. I've gotten, uh, I've made some distance here uh, on that, that journey I set out to do. And I think for all of us, we kind of have that where it's like, you know, I want to go and, and do a course. Or I want to do training or I want to learn a new skill. And then if you start to think about it, it's a lot of work, you know, launching a new business, a new company, that's a lot of work. And I think that if all of us knew the amount of pain and suffering and, and stress and all the turmoil you're going to go through when you're doing something that big, you probably wouldn't do it. You would just say like, that is scary and doesn't sound pleasant. But instead, you know, being in the trenches, this is where it's good to, to be in there with a turbulence all around you because you're making headway, you're doing it all. And I'm trying not to like throw a thousand metaphors out there because there's a dozen coming to me right now, but uh, it, it is, it's literally about just trying to make that progress. And as you make that progress, then you can look back and say, okay, yeah, like shit, here I am, let's say in the middle of my business and, or in the middle of my course and fuck, that was a lot of work, but you know, I'm making progress. Now I can see results. Now I can measure my success. Now I can do all this. I can see that, you know, it was worth it. But in the beginning, it's so easy to say, well, I either just want that instant result. Or I don't want to do the work or you start to think about doing all that work, getting those abs or whatever. And, um, and it, it's scary. It's like shit, like getting up every morning and working hard and, and being miserable for a while until it becomes fun. Like that does not 
sound like something I want to do. Change scares everyone. So that's where, you know, I've talked about a dozen times, like putting systems in place, doing all these things. It's, it's all about just shutting the hell up and just getting to it. The more you just start moving forward, making a commitment to yourself, understanding that you are going to go through hell, but the results are going to be worth it down the line. That's the only way that you're going to ever get changed to identify the things that you're not doing in uh, the situation I mentioned, um, you know, about like, let's say you did want to have like the, the dream job that I mentioned, that would be one where you would identify like, what are the things I'm not willing to do? Well, now I got to be willing to do them. Now I got to be doing them and, and set out to, to tackle all those things that scare the shit out of you. And I have that right now in, in some of the the business stuff that I'm doing, it scares the shit out of me. There's so many things that, um, you know, it's easy to get overwhelmed, but that's where sometimes it is just about knuckling down and just moving forward and not looking at the big picture, knowing that you are making some progress and then just checking in a while, in a while you know, and, uh, and realizing where you're at. So I'm excited and I hope you are for 2018, you know, and again, no matter when you're listening to this, uh, you know, have those goals in front of you and know that, yes, it's going to suck. You are going to have to go and do things that are uncomfortable, that are going to really test you, and that's how you get growth. And so in the beginning, it's all about making that commitment saying, I'm going to do this. And I realized that me acknowledging right now that this is the, the start line of my journey, this is where the hell begins. It isn't, I'm going to do this, and then you get that gratification. In fact, there is uh, a lot of studies around this where um, a lot of people... I've actually found just by telling people that they're going to go do something like they're going to, you know, I'm going to keep saying like lose weight or let's say quit alcohol or I don't know what it is, um, you know, but like I'm going to go learn the guitar. Just by doing it, you have that dopamine hit that you're going to trick yourself into feeling like you already did learn the guitar. You know, you already did lose that weight, so you don't need to do it anymore. Um, basically, you've already scratched that itch. And that's where it can be really damaging at times to go and over communicate your goals to other people because what if you are failing, then it's just because you have that accountability, it's it's even more disconcerting to you that like, shit, I, I might as well just give up because I've got all these eyes on me, I've got this pressure that probably doesn't exist, but you're imagining all this pressure around you. Uh, again, talking last night, um, that person I mentioned there were talking about like Instagram and social media and all this stuff and kind of feeling, I think they felt that pressure that people are kind of expecting you know, posts and certain things from them all the time. And I, I, I can relate to that in the past where like, I, you know, if you care too much about the stuff, suddenly it becomes this thing where there's this imaginary pressure that, you know, the whole world is expecting something from you and they're not, no one cares about you uh, in that moment. It's just, it's you putting that on yourself. And um, it's the same deal here where, you know, going and over communicating, you're putting pressure on, on yourself by, letting everyone else know, which can be really effective because that way you have that accountability, but it can be ineffective uh, in the sense that going and telling someone like, yeah, I'm going to, you know, lose weight and get in shape. I'm going to be ripped and all this stuff. Like your brain is going through the process of picturing you being like that. And uh, it's essentially rewarding you in that moment where you get that dopamine hit, you suddenly feel great and you, you feel all that. And then you don't feel like you need to do it anymore because you've, you've gotten that reward. So it's just an interesting thing that like uh, it can be really counterintuitive to uh, to do this. And you've got to be really careful about, um, you know, how you set yourself up with other people and how what you communicate, because um, sometimes it's better just to to, you know, if you're looking for that reward, that that itch being scratched, it's better to um, to say, OK, I'm going to set a goal where let's say uh, on this day, I'm going to go perform the guitar or I'm going to go wear a bikini. I'm not going to wear a bikini, don't worry. Um, you know, what, whatever it is that that is going to be your reward. And think about like, what are the ways that you can measure your success, reward yourself with that success. And also at the same time, like these are the things that are going to keep you moving forward when you're going through the tough times. You know, when you're taking those punches and keep moving forward, that's how winning is done. Sorry, I had to quote Rocky. Um, uh, segue for a second, like last year, I was going to quote Rocky in like one of my talks and um it was hilarious because word for word um goro fujita over at facebook he he quoted the exact same quote and i was just like damn it and then someone else quoted rocky uh, um later that day as well so like you know i was the third person to come on stage and at that point uh it's just like man you know and okay i'm really segueing but like um it's kind of funny because a lot of the times when i do talks i'm usually one of the closers 
and uh, which it's a good thing. It's it's you know it's it's really meant to be you know someone who's setting the tone for the whole event um, by doing one of the last talks. But at the same time, uh, I you know there's been a few times where I'm like, man, like literally everything I wanted to talk about has been covered you know loosely by other people uh, accumulatively over the the past couple of days. So um, there's a talk coming up uh, in March that I'm going to be speaking at. And uh, I actually said last year, I'm like, I am opening this time. I'm not closing. So uh, I'm the second speaker um, at this event, which will be fun because I've never done that. It's always at the very end, but it's also partially uh, because I, I want to, I'm doing a lot of travel that month and I want to just get the event done and I got to fly out. So I'm going to be in early. I'm going to meet up with my mentor students and LAS and everything and I'm going to do my talk and I'll be around for the event. But as soon as the event's over, I am taking a crepe with me to the airport. We're in Paris. So, uh, and then uh, flying back to um, to the States. So, yeah. Anyway, a um, bit of a segue there. But all I wanted to say was that, yeah, usually usually in that time where you're kind of taking those punches and, and moving forward, you've got to remind yourself why you're doing it. What was the purpose of all this? Otherwise, it's very easy to talk yourself out of it. So I think that we all go through struggles and it's better to acknowledge that, yes, you know, I'm doing this to get a result down the line. And yes, I know that it's going to be hard. That's why I'm doing it. If it were easy, we'd all be doing it. And I'm trying to do something great. I'm trying to do something for me. You know, if you're trying to change careers, this could be the year that you decide that you want to get into art. You want to move away from the corporate job that you have. Or maybe you're in the industry and it's just you want to step up and really be able to command the fees that you want or to have the responsibility or not have to take a job in a remote location because all the work's going there, you know, whatever it might be. And that's the thing too. I mean, I had a call uh, two days ago uh, with someone and, you know, that was one of the big things is, is like right now they feel like even though they are one of the leading names in, in their niche in the industry – they're not getting as many calls and they feel like because they're not saying yes to uh, a lot of the Vancouver work. So they're, uh, you know, basically they're seeing, being seen as someone who doesn't play ball. And it sucks. Like that sucks that you're in that, you know, that that situation exists. I love Vancouver personally, but, um, you know, it sucks that you might have to relocate somewhere because, you know, that's the way the industry is working right now. It's like be in this location uh, or else, you know. So, Whatever your goals are, if that was a goal for you to be able to establish yourself in a way that you can work remote uh, and be able to say like, look, I don't work from Canada. I don't even work from LA. I work from home in my home studio. I've got all my equipment, my own licenses. Um, this is how I work. Uh, this is how I work with all my clients. If you want to do business, you know, let's schedule something. And this is what I've worked towards creating for myself. You can do that. But all of these things require that growth, getting out of your comfort zone, learning to say no to certain work until people are getting comfortable with you being a remote worker, whatever it might be. So that was Siri <laughs> um, speaking just there. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, I wanted to just kind of go on a quick rant about this, but I think that and I hope that this is something that's valuable to you in your journey. And that is that you can have that change at any time, but to all also realize that there's work involved. It's hard. And like, if you are committing to a course or anything, it's a commitment. You're investing in yourself and all of us need to be doing that. And and that's the hard part is most of us aren't willing to put in the work. But if you are, you're going to be one of the people who stands out instantly. You're going to be one of those people that is a doer, that is someone who executes, you know, um, that conversation. I had a big, big conversation. I had a lot of conversations yesterday <laughs> with a lot of different people. Um, I've had a few people recently like, why are you always on the phone? And it's just like, dude, I don't even. Um, yeah, like time and time again, like I feel like my superpower is that I'm an executor. You know, I am a doer. And I think that that is what makes me special. I don't think that I am necessarily the most talented person in the world or the best good looking person in the world. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not someone who works harder than anyone else necessarily. Like all the things for me, like I feel like that make me unique from let's say the person next to me would be that I will set out to do something then I'm actually going to do it. I'm definitely not a talker. And I love when I meet those people who are like, I've got a million dollar idea. You know, I've got this really cool idea. I'm trying to find a lawyer because I got a million dollar idea. It's like, motherfucker, please. Like every single person on the planet has like five of those a day. Okay. The difference is that there are certain people who are out there who are actually going to make it happen. And at the same time, like I got um, ambushed 
the other other day um my insurance person i guess um took me out to dinner and then landed a i have a screenplay i'm writing and i want to make it into a movie i figure you're the guy to make it happen <laughs> it's just like oh god get me the fuck out of here as fast as possible um and but, but that's just it like you know there's nothing wrong with having a screenplay or other ideas and all that kind of stuff and and networking and asking uh i think that it's not right to kind of get someone cornered and then you know throw that stuff down but um the thing is, and, and what I told him was that in this day and age, especially when they're, I think, 45 or something, if you want to do something like that, you can. You you could get something off the ground. But if you want to go the traditional mediums that everyone else is doing, it is A, the lottery. <laughs> You're going to literally be gambling. But B, you got to pay your dues. Uh, there's such a traditional old kind of set path if you want to get anything to happen, let's say, in Hollywood to do anything you're going to need to go down a very brutal path, which is probably more committing time, like paying time, working your way up just to get into the right situations to maybe make things happen. And then, like I said, playing the lottery of both uh, meeting the right people, timing opportunities, and then having even once, like if you manage to align all the stars at once in that one moment, you still got to be able to sell yourself, sell your your dream, sell your product. And I think that in this day and age, there are so many new tools available that no one ever had before that you can go and do all this stuff where you create a product and you're able to sell it as proof to skip a lot of these channels because you're essentially able to, um, to measure the success of something uh, within a certain audience and be able to say like, this is going to work. So now, now I'm going to shop it to the right people with all the metrics involved and it basically comes down to like if you want to do something you are better off in this day and age doing it yourself because you don't need permission from a hierarchy of people early on to make it happen you can go and do it and then decide from there what to do with it you know um, you can create a lot of opportunities for yourself through uh, you know everything from crowdfunding to just creating audiences I love that one of my friends got his feature film uh, picked up and is in production at the moment. And all he did is go and create a short film trailer. And he had already gone through the right channels enough already that he could have the right people in front of it when it came out. And he literally had like a 48 hour bidding war before he, you know, chose who he was going with and the the movie went uh, into pre-production. So, you know, in this day and age, you can do anything. We have so many freaking tools out there. You just need to be someone who executes and not talks because really, when you're pitching to someone, hey, I've got a script or hey, I've got an idea or whatever it is, you're really trying to get someone else to make it happen because you're not executing. You're basically asking for permission. You're saying, hey, I've got a great idea. You do the work and I'll piggyback on on um, your efforts, you know, however you want to position that. But if you execute, if you're saying to someone like if you set out a plan and you actually do it, you're willing to go and do the hard yards because that's what you're doing. As soon as you say, I'm going to do a a course because I, I keep bringing that up, but like I've, I just signed up for something. I'm, I'm going to commit to it. I'm serious to it. That's you executing. That's you making that commitment right there. If you even say like, I'm going to go learn a new language every morning, I'm going to get up at 6 a.m. I'm going to do one hour. And then I'm hoping within a certain time period, I, I know I can have a conversation. You know, obviously, you know, I've talked enough about this stuff that, um, you know, there's steps that you take along the way to test yourself and to have that growth. So going out to, <laughs> I don't know, like um, have conversations with people every weekend or whatever and get better and better, uh, whatever it might be, like put yourself in those places that you can get the growth, you can measure whether you you need uh, or to help course correct what you're doing. You know, there's so much to it. But the point is that you're executing, you're making a plan, you're committing to it and you're executing. And if you can be one of those people, then it doesn't matter if you, you uh, succeed or you fail because all of that is still you moving forward. You know, I look at any time like, uh, you know, I, I really welcome failure into what I'm doing because whether I fail or I succeed, I'm still going to pick it apart and I'm going to look at, you know, what I can get from it. And I'm always looking to experiment in my business and everything that I'm doing because I love seeing those results. I love that socially. And this will be coming up in one of those boot camps. I love that socially where I can go out and, um, you know, I still love going out and meeting strangers all the time uh, because I loved it because I was scared shitless of it. It's probably... The number one thing on the planet that I would be afraid of would be uh, going out 
to a room of strangers and literally trying to get to know every single person in a in a bar or whatever like that sounds scary as shit. And um, bit by bit, it was great because even if I went up to someone and they just turned to you and said, fuck off, which uh, can happen, um, I would learn something from that. I would gather that data, you know, bit by bit, I would figure things out. Maybe it wasn't even what I said and maybe it was just my face, like maybe with my body language, maybe the, you know, whatever it is, like, um, you know, I always take responsibility myself, even when it's not necessarily your fault, you can still look at what you can do better to handle a situation. And um, yeah, I, for me, it always fascinates me. And all of this fascinates me because it's all about that execution. So this is a massive, massive rant, but uh, it's one that I wanted to do because again, I feel like um, I didn't really have a chance to kind of set the tone for this year. And at the same time, I felt like um, for me, this is something I'm excited about right now in my life is that Monday is the big day that uh, we're about to dive into um, this course that I'm running. And, uh, you know, obviously registration's long gone closed and uh but i'm i'm excited like you know it'll open again next year but i'm excited right now that um you know we're all about to go on this journey and i know that there are going to be people that are struggling along the way i know there's going to be people who were like hey i signed up i expected to have skills <laughs> by tuesday what's up and um you know and i also know by observing along the way like the people who stick with it like for our live reviews like every two weeks or whatever i um i do a bunch of sessions and what I do is I'll do a group webinar with um, as many people can sign up for that time zone because I'll do one in the morning. I'll do them late at night. So that way, no matter where in the world you are, it kind of, you know, there will be a session that works for you. Even when people are at work, I'll do a, um, you know, they'll, they'll still be able to chat or, you know, if they can't use the microphone or, you know, if they're not comfortable speaking English, they can use the chat feature, whatever. And um, yeah, I feel like those people who are in there, they get the most growth because they're going in, they're getting their work critiqued, they're getting to ask questions. And me personally, I'm able to say, hey, you know what? Like this is actually a common thing and what you do is this. Or, hey, you know what? I'm noticing a real consistency with all of your work that this keeps happening. So let's dive into that. Let's figure out what's going on. Uh, same thing with the career intensives and all that stuff. Like I just had uh, this guy at Weta who um, I'm uh, coaching at the moment with, um, he wants to kind of build his name up and and get out there and, Problem is like a lot of his work is under NDA and like, so we're trying to figure out a way to get him exposure without, you know, pissing people off basically and kind of getting into that. So, you know, all of this, it's, it's going to be a struggle. You're always going to go through struggles when you're not, that means you're stagnant. You know, when you're not making that noise, when you're not being aggressive, when you're not doing all the things that make you uncomfortable, that's when you're at a standstill and it's better to be failing or winning than to be keeping still. You know, um, I'll just end it with, I was trying to explain it last night and I'm probably explaining it terribly, but I was watching Tosh.0, I think, um, a few nights ago. And there's this clip of someone who's like under a train and this train's like whipping by and he's just trying to keep still and his buddy is there like with his phone recording the whole thing, trying to encourage him like, hey, if you just like roll out right now, you'll make it. <laughs> and this train is like whipping by, it's suicide. But for him, like he is literally just trying to keep still like um his hands are at his face and he's just tight it's kind of like if you move you die essentially is like probably what's going through his head and i do feel like a lot of us are in that exact situation where a lot of us feel like if i just keep still with what i'm doing then everything's going to be okay if i move if i do anything differently like change one thing in my life then it could all backfire and um there's again i don't want to name names but there's someone who owns a company um that like they had a meeting recently and they're like, oh, we're making, um, you know, a couple of million this year it was. And uh, it's great because we made a couple of million the year before and the year before. So everything is great. In other words, there's no growth in the company, but there's no, you know, no decline in profits either. But this person is very reluctant to grow, very reluctant to bring in new clients. And my whole thing has been, well, what do you do when all your clients die? <laughs> you know, if that's all you have is the same consistent clients, then eventually other competition's going to come along uh, or maybe they, they've gotten what they need and they're going to move on. Whatever it might be, if you're not bringing in new blood into your, your company, then um, it's it's going to run out. You know, like eventually it will dip. And what do you do then? It's going to be too late. And I do feel like maybe the reason that they don't want to bring in new clients is more because they just don't really know what they're doing. Like they're successful, but they don't know why. And because of that, it's a lot easier to say, well, look, I'm just going to stay under the train and not move. Like if I keep very still, then I'm not necessarily doing anything right, but I'm not necessarily doing anything wrong. 
And because I'm not measuring, and again, like that's why I entertain failure. The more I can entertain failure, the more I can say, well, this this didn't work, so do more of the other thing. But if it did work, I say, whoa, okay, I didn't expect that to work and it did, so do more of this. And you got to have all that. It's okay to have like a few little losses and then a lot of wins or, or vice versa. It's part of life, you know what I mean? And um, and that that's just it. Like for for that person, if you don't, if you're not willing to experiment and test and and learn your own business, then you are going to just keep really tight, really still, and not move because that way nothing can go wrong. Because you don't know what you're doing right and wrong. It's just going to stay the same. But I would rather take a few risks. I'm not saying slide out from underneath a moving train, but I do think that um, you know we we need to take risks, and occasionally you might be like, "Crap, that that failed." Okay, do more of this. You know, um, I'm always interested just to experiment, and that's part of life. You know, like embrace the failures. I mentioned uh, last month, like a few episodes back. You know, something that I like a little note I wrote to myself, and I, I kind of actually added to that last night, but. I've got a thousand notes on my screen right now um, from uh, the past couple of days. But uh, yeah, I mean, I wrote basically attack with urgency and fail fast because it just was something that as I was kind of getting set up with the boot camp, I started realizing how overwhelmed I was in December, let alone now. And it was like with everything I'm doing, I need to attack it with urgency. I need to do it as if it's due tomorrow. I think it's Parkinson's law that I talk about a bit and, you know, a, a task will expand to fulfill the finite length that exists essentially. So with that, you know, if I have a week to do something, it's going to take a week. But if I say this needs to be done by tomorrow, in fact, I'm doing that right now. There's something that I estimated when I sat down and bidded it out. Um, the estimate was it was going to be about six weeks to do. And I was like, fuck that. It's due Sunday. And this is me. Don't worry. I'm not <laughs> assigning this to someone else. Like here's your impossible deadline. I'm giving that to myself. And I've had to reshuffle everything, but I'm giving it everything I've got to uh, and maybe that's why I'm doing this podcast right now to procrastinate but that was me attacking it with urgency and it also means by failing fast it means that like if it's not going to work it's better to get to the failure fast and see that it's not working and move on than to say like okay well I'm just not going to look at the results I'm not going to measure this uh, and that way you know I'm I don't need to worry about like seeing the fact that this isn't going to work so this year for you should be one of execution to acknowledge everything that you're going to go through, all the struggle, but to attack it with that urgency and fail, fail plenty, but also succeed plenty as well and learn from those failures. It's all about calibrating, you know, seeing what works, what doesn't work, firing out 500 resumes. Someone did that. In fact, there's an email I need to respond to. Uh, yeah, uh, this is good. There's an email I need to respond to. Someone emailed me over Christmas and said, I sent out 120 um, resumes last year and I haven't gotten any responses I want you to um, to tell me like what I'm doing wrong. And unfortunately, it's just I was getting a couple hundred email a day because I was in the middle of December <laughs> being crazy, crazy year. Um, and so I emailed him back and said like, look, I want to, uh, to sit down and go through this with you because I'm fascinated by the fact that you could count 120 emails. Like I really want to dig into this and I haven't had a chance to respond yet. So I'm going to do that. I think this would be an amazing just uh, case study to kind of dive into. But um yeah, I'm excited. This is going to be a killer year uh, for all of you, I hope. And um, yeah, there's so many things that I want to announce I'm really proud of. It's just, again, getting to that point where I can. Um, but yeah, like I'm more committed now than I have been to the podcast, to a lot of the growth that we're doing. There's a lot of career related stuff that I want to do this year that I want to announce. And because in the past, like it's it's kind of hard to balance running businesses, running film related stuff, running career related, like all the, the stuff around there and and everything else. And um, and definitely that's something that I want to get a hold of more this year. So that way I can really laser focus my time into certain areas. And again, the 90 day year that like um, I talk about, that's been like a huge um, growth spot for me being able to kind of have the foresight, having that 30,000 foot view to be able to say, okay, great. Now I can spread things out. Now I can see where they're coming from. Now I can see where I need to put my time, my focus. And then still be able to laser focus in on one day at a time, one hour at a time. But, uh, you know, at, at times it can be pretty overwhelming too when you're trying to do five years in one, which is really in 90 days. And that's where it gets a little bit scary, which is me right now. But, um, okay, so I'm going to leave it there. I've got some really cool episodes coming up. I am excited. And let me know. Shoot me an email 
or leave a comment. Um, let me know what you think about these solo episodes because for me, there's a lot that I want to cover. And at the same time, I'm, I'm always like, ah, you know, I'd, I'd rather hear someone else talk about like all the great insights that they have. But then when I'm not doing solo episodes, I get, you know, emails from people saying like, yo, like I love the interviews, but where are you at? Like what's going on? So um, yeah, I definitely want to do more of these, but at the same time, like, let me know what you want, what you want to hear. Um, we have a huge guest list of people, uh, of episodes coming up and of other people we're, we're getting on board soon. But at the same time, if there are people that you you have in mind that you're like, oh man, it'd be so cool if you could get whoever on board. Um, <laughs> I thought it was funny because I did actually ask that on, on Facebook and someone said JJ Abrams. And I'm like, that sounds awesome. I don't see it happening <laughs> but uh yeah i mean who the hell knows i'm i'm excited like there's definitely gonna be so much cool stuff this year i'm psyched i'm gonna <laughs> stop saying how excited i am but clearly um yeah there's just gonna be a, a lot of really cool content one of the cool things i haven't maybe i did mention it but i'm doing a talk on branding in paris so i'm gonna be talking about building your brand building your name how to get it out there because i've helped a lot of people be able to get their name out there and, and build a good following uh, build the audience that's right for them and get a lot of success around that as well. And that's something that I want to talk really in depth about a lot of growth hacking and how you can do all that. Um, yeah, it's just, it's really fascinating. Cause again, I think that like everyone has the power, the opportunity, the ability to do really amazing things to have a lot of talent. It does take the hard work part, which I keep talking about. And that's what this episode's about is that things require effort, require struggle. And I think that that's where a lot of people aren't willing to put in the time, but you all, we all are capable of doing amazing things. We all have hidden talents, hidden abilities that we can all uh, take advantage of. And it's just about finding what that is. Like there's a book, I can't remember the Ken something off the top, the top of my head, but um, The Elements, which I've talked about before. And I, I love that book um, because it does talk about finding that unique ability that makes you, you. And we all have that. And I think that a lot of us are maybe even afraid um, you know, to acknowledge that or to kind of put it out there, which again is where we all kind of get that struggle. But if you're willing to do it, if you're willing to execute, if you're willing to get out of your comfort zone, that's where you can shine. You can have that ability. And I think building your brand is really about building the the story and crafting it around you, being able to build that image up, being able to have a message and really craft that message that this is who I am. This is what I do. You know, and I love when I meet people who are like, yeah, I do this. No, I don't do that. You know, because it bit by bit, like they're identifying what they like doing, what they don't like doing, what they're willing to do, what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are. They're figuring themselves out. And the more that they are able to be in tune with that, the further they're going to go because they know who they are. And I think that we all struggle a lot of the time to, to really know who we are. And now I'm getting really, really deep, but uh, it's so true. I mean, you know, this podcast is about film, visual effects, design, creatives, all of us. But Really, for me, the reason that I started this podcast was because I feel that a lot of us don't embrace the things that we should, which is us, the skills that we naturally have or that we we grow over time. We're too focused on the hard skills. You know, we're too focused on, you know, knowing what tool is going to make us better. And I get that all the freaking time, all the fucking time. Uh, I get people emailing me like, hey, I want to be the best artist in the world. What software do I need to know? You know, and it, that's not going to help you. It's all about learning, you know, where all that talent comes from. You know, for me, like I, I, I learn more from sitting in dailies and that's why I love the reviews in the course. Uh, I love sitting in dailies with like John Knoll or Dennis Murin or so many other amazing directors and supervisors and seeing how they might analyze a shot differently to me and like what they, they have, like how their brain, their eye works and what, how they pick things apart because if I'm able to look at my work and I know exactly what's wrong with it and what I need to, to tweak, you know, it, the more foresight I see into other people's work and how to get, how to communicate to them, how to better their shots, how to better their work, that is going to make me way more powerful than knowing how to use whatever tool. Okay. Um, and for me with the podcast, it's all about that. It's all about getting that growth. You know, uh, I think that, you know, I've talked about it too, is that your skill is one thing, but your network, your, the way you can communicate the way that you're able to push yourself to be productive, to be efficient by evaluating constantly like where your time and energy is going, you know, not wasting time on a, a part of a shot that the client or the director never even communicated that they wanted in the first place. Those are all the, the things that are going to be your downfall. And um, it's really about learning all these life skills that make us 
better and more unique as an artist. And I talk about, you know, being a next level artist. And that's something I've talked about so much because I feel that that is who we all should be. And that is that it's easy to go to work and sit in the dark in a room in a remote location that you got told to go to. You know, it's easy to go and do all those things because that's what is the norm. You know, it's easy to embrace the starving artist mentality and say, well, artists aren't meant to be successful. You know, we're all meant to, to struggle and, and this is who we are, you know, and, and to undersell yourself. Like all of these things, it's something that you hold on to to validate not putting yourself out there, not jumping out from underneath that uh, the Tosh.0 train. Um, what is going to make you successful is identifying that, look, I'm going to be the best that I can be. And it doesn't mean that I need to be showy. Uh, it doesn't mean I have to have an ego, an attitude. None of those things are going to make you you. It's all about you identifying the talent, the skill, the things that make you special and leveraging that and pushing it and being the best you can be and bringing everyone else up. I hate how competitive some people can be where they need to say like, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to help the people around me because I don't want them to be at my level. You know, by bringing everyone up, you're building an army around you of people who are all going to help each other, you know, and, and that's what it's all about is that you contribute to everyone else. They're going to contribute to you when they are too busy to do a job. They're going to recommend you. If you build that competitiveness and that disconnect between people, then they're not going to recommend you. In fact, if your name gets brought up, they're going to do what they can to to steer it away from you. So building up those networks, those those communities, those families of people around you. So that way you all move up together you know, and embracing business. And for me, that's exactly what this is about. Like being a next level artist means being an artist who uses your your entire potential, that pushes yourself, that doesn't hold back and, and, and keep in that frozen frame that I talk about, but instead embraces that they are in themselves an entity. You know, you are someone, you are your own studio. You need to be your own marketing department. You need to be your own accountant. You need to learn to negotiate. You need to learn to sell yourself, to sell your work, to stand by it, to keep improving and not get stale by sticking by the skills that you learned at a certain point and decided to get lazy. You know, by continuing to grow, these are the things that allow you, you know, uh, go for what you're worth, negotiate what you're worth, ask for what you're worth. Learning when and where to, to ask for certain things. I've, I've had so many conversations recently where people have failed to mention certain things because they were afraid to bring it up. And then later on, they're like, oh, by the way, I was hoping to get credit for this or it's hoping um, to get overtime or all these other things. And when you not bring it up in the beginning, suddenly you're changing the conversation. But if you are confident enough to say like, look, I'd love to work in this project. This sounds like a great opportunity for me to do it. I, I really think it's important, like I want to get my name on this or I want to make sure there's overtime because I see this being a lot of work and I want to stay committed to it. But at the same time, I don't want to undervalue myself because it's going to make me resent the project. So this is what I want. Do you think it's fair? Do you agree? If so, let's proceed. You know, all of the life skills that make us be an artist who has the ability to go so far to, to get to that 0.01% that I talked about, that's what it's all about. And for that, you got to struggle to get those abs. You got to go through the suffering. You got to work, but it all starts with that opportunity and that opportunity, whether it's signing up for a course, whether it's joining a gym, whether it's tomorrow saying tomorrow's day one of me waking up at 5 a.m. and spending two hours every morning reading a book. And I'm doing that right now. Um, I'm trying to make my mornings about learning, which has been hard because I'm, I'm always like, no, I've got so much to do, but um, it is about like trying to step back and, and just use that as dedicated me time where there's no distractions. No one else is awake. No one can talk to me. My phone's off and I can just focus on that. I haven't looked at email yet, so I'm not stressed and distracted by what's going on in the day. And for me, that's the growth journey I'm on right now is dedicating more time to investing in myself and learning some new things. And uh, I love that because you get hungry for it. You want more of it. And all those things throughout the day you think about and you continue to want to apply to what you're doing. So that's my challenge for you to make this your year for growth, putting yourself out of your comfort zone, executing on everything and measuring the failures and the successes to attack with urgency and fail fast.